everyone. Welcome to another online series of Singapore Computer Society Blockchain Special Interest Group. I would like to introduce Yagnesh Pota, who heads up Markets Transaction Management Technology for ANZ Bank's Markets Division. As a SME in Operations and Settlements Technology, he has been focusing on digitizing operations through leveraging AI and blockchain-related technologies. Yangnish will be speaking on a real-world use case of blockchain with us today. Hi, my name is Yagnesh Porta. Welcome to this presentation on blockchain. And I'm doing this presentation on behalf of Singapore Computer Society Blockchain Special Interest Group. I've titled this presentation, Blockchain or Chain by Blocks. And as I go through this presentation, you will see why I feel that sometimes projects tend to get chained by the blocks rather than being freed by blockchain. So let us begin. I, my personal view is that currently we have a dilemma in that a lot of organizations find it difficult to decide what is a good use case for implementing blockchain and distributed ledger technology in their organizations. And so what is happening in this space is that a lot of the use cases are based on the idea of creating collaborative platforms or and ecosystems for various participants outside the organization to come together and collaborate with the organization. Also, blockchain, I feel, is often treated as a solution in search of a problem. So I think uh, just as in video games, you often have that one key game that is launched with the console to make it a big, big win, uh, a big sales win. Blockchain hasn't found, I think, to date that one use case that is the big use case. And so I think what happens is people tend to try and implement blockchain and distributed ledger technology solutions in use cases that don't actually qualify for them. So what happens is in too many uh, cases, blockchain and distributed ledger technology is seen as an experiment and the use cases identified do not actually lend themselves to a true implementation of a blockchain or distributed ledger solution. And once an organization or a team goes through a number of proof of concepts that fail repeatedly, you kind of have this mental block that's get, that gets created and suddenly you go from a blockchain to being chained by blocks. So pun intended here. Moving on. I'm now going to talk about a uh, use case that we had at ANZ. The use case was for a process called the risk sell down process. And essentially the risk sell down process involves ANZ managing the trade risks for letter of credit confirmations with customers. In the absence of a risk appetite from ANZ uh, on the LC issuing bank, ANZ can enter a risk participation agreement to sell down the LC risk to an external counterparty, which typically tends to be another bank or financial services group. This helps to support customers while effectively managing trade risk exposure. The process that existed was a manual one and was managed via several technical tools such as Microsoft Excel, emails, and MS SharePoint. Um, Every sell down agreement and the underlying LC had to be tracked and monitored manually as a change in any terms of the LC would have to be tracked and reflected uh, in the already issued sell down agreements. So this was becoming a cumbersome process for three teams that were based in three different locations. And the manual process as it stood increased operational risk as it required the three teams to be synced up on the LCs and the sell down agreements that were in place. 
So now let's look at what are the key characteristics of a use case that lends itself to a blockchain or a distributed ledger solution. The best use cases tend to leverage the strengths of the technology in terms of leveraging a couple of or more of the following key characteristics. So there needs to be the need for a single source of truth. So that's, that implies that uh, data needs to be sourced from one golden source and it needs to be uh, immutable and it needs to be a single source of truth. The second aspect is that a good use case will allow for uh, creating uh, digitization of information and content, including versioning, and will allow you to secure that in an immutable fashion. <coughs> A key characteristic is that once you digitize, you then are able to create a secure digital store. Often a requirement that you have is that you are able to prove an audit trail of all events and transactions that occur on the platform. A good use case for blockchain uh, is one that also needs an immutable audit trail, one that is secure and cannot be tampered with. And finally, no business process or use case works in isolation. There tends to be business logic encapsulated in the process and a good use case should be leveraging smart contracts to encapsulate that business logic rather than try and build that business logic in the processes themselves. So as I go through uh, and discuss in a, just in a little bit more detail the RSDP use case, you will see that the RSDP use case leveraged all of the above strengths from a blockchain perspective. So the RSDP application was built with a vendor and was built using essentially open source technologies. The technology stack included Hyperledger and Fabric, Red Hat Linux 7, the Go programming language for smart contract logic, a HTML-based web-based user interface, uh, a MongoDB implementation for the database, and OpenShift for containerization. And the benefit of using all of these technologies is that they are open source. And so, uh, there is a lot of information available from that perspective and a lot of vendors who are able to provide you insight uh, and provide solutions using these technologies. So having implemented the RSDP application, I think it's important to understand what were the key benefits derived from a user perspective, which was essentially the trade ops team. The key benefits for the trade ops team were, first of all, a reduction in emails flying about and a reduction in the manual steps required for managing requests and instructions, as well as improved communication between teams to ensure alignment of all activities. A key benefit was the removal of reconciliation processes as everyone was working off the single source of truth. Uh, and not their local version of truth. And this is quite important because it speeds up your processes as you're no longer waiting for verification and validation at every step. If everybody works off the same, cop the same copy of the truth, then there is no reconciliation required. Finally, by leveraging smart contracts, we were able to create workflows that support the offer and acceptance processes which helped us to cut the communication chain by sending uh, emails and documents directly to the risk participant uh, and also helped in digitizing the process, which helps to reduce operating risk for all involved. As everybody is now working off that one single source of truth and one source of documents that are secured and digitized and properly version control, you now reduce the risk of manual errors, uh, fat finger errors, people forgetting to update 
the risk sell down agreements, et cetera. And so operating risk is dramatically reduced for all the participants involved. I'm now going to cover perhaps the most important aspect of this presentation, which is what were the key lessons learned as we went through this process? So I think the first thing was that we had a number of false starts and the false starts were from the perspective of uh, we worked with vendors who knew the technology space and knew the blockchain distributed ledger space but didn't really understand our business the trade business or the markets business so that meant that their solutioning uh, often fell short of providing all the benefits that blockchain can provide and i think it's very important to align and work with vendors who can quickly tap into resources uh, uh, with skills across a number of industries rather than those that are limited to a specific sector or specific industry. The other, as the other area where we had a number of false starts was in identifying the correct use case. We put a lot of effort into ensuring that we had the right use case to work on that met all of the requirements that I talked about earlier in terms of leveraging the technology strengths. Um, I, we did do a number of proof of concepts, uh, two proof of concepts, and found that the use cases we had selected were not ideal for blockchain because they could easily be solved using uh, traditional technology such as workflows. Another key lesson we learned was that most people who do blockchain or DL technology solutions or vendors tend to focus on cloud implementations. From our perspective, we did not want to do a cloud implementation from the get-go. We actually wanted to do an on-premises implementation. And what this meant was that uh, we found that no, none of the vendors had actually got real world experience on doing uh, on-prem implementations. We also looked at software as a service uh, solution, and we decided that at this stage for the technology and for us as an organization, we were not mature enough to implement software as a service in the cloud. So looking at a key lesson, uh, I think we also, uh, had to make sure that we thought about the technology stack, the architecture from an enterprise perspective. So for example, uh, there was a there, there needs to be thinking about if the organization is going to accept an Ubuntu implementation versus a Red Hat implementation. Uh, simply from a supportability perspective, from a licensing perspective, uh, Ubuntu's open source and uh, you know, we found that a lot of code had to be refactored when we went from Ubuntu to Red Hat to make sure we met uh, the approved patterns within our IT organization. So do bear in mind that any solution you come up with and any technology stack you uh, agree upon with the vendor has to go through various architecture forums to get approved uh, and has to follow uh, enterprise patterns for that particular organization. Otherwise, the implementation is not going to be successful. I think a key consideration that needs to be borne in mind is compliance and regulatory requirements. So for example, if you are putting a solution in the cloud, what are the requirements from a regulatory perspective? What would compliance require from you as an organization and a technology team? Uh, so, for example, what are the rules around data privacy as well as data masking um, when you are looking at putting production data into the cloud? So from that perspective, we decided to stay on premises within the organization's firewall and that removed all of those obstacles for us at this point in time. I think one of the most important aspects that I found is that uh, Typically, solutions tend to be 
overcomplicated. So let me give an example. Because we were doing blockchain and distributed ledger technology, I was repeatedly asked about consensus algorithms and how consensus was going to work on our network. And actually when looking at what we had done, given that it was an internal implementation between three, between three teams in ANZ, uh, within the ANZ network, consensus was not really a key consideration. Uh, we, the need for a consensus approach and a consensus algorithm was negated. So I'm not saying it will not be needed in the future, but to focus on that as a key problem was just overcomplicating the solution at, the, at this point in time. So we actually found that we didn't really even need a consensus algorithm from that perspective. So really what we learned was to aim for simplicity in our design and in our implementation. Finally, I think it's quite important to bear in mind how success will be measured. For us, it was a playoff against uh, what we can learn from an innovation perspective, from a return on investment perspective, and most importantly, you know, in this particular use case, uh, you know, enhancing operational risk management and reducing the operational risk. All these factors need to be taken into account from the perspective of ensuring the stakeholders understand how success will be measured and how uh, for future investments can be looked at in the blockchain space. So I think these were the key lessons learned. Um, I think what I, what I will cover next is also uh, what is happening next for the application. So the application went live in August 2020. Several clients have been onboarded and several live trades have already been booked. A number of showcases are being undertaken within the bank to get various divisions thinking about how they can employ blockchain and distributed ledger technology and uh, look at also think about how other products within the trade uh, operations in the bank can be uh, onboarded onto the platform as they follow a very similar process. And then finally, sometime in 2021, uh, we will look at getting permission to move the platform uh, into the cloud to increase its scalability, reduce costs, and to essentially take the journey towards opening the platform up to external counterparties. This is all I wanted to cover today. Thank you very much for attending and I wish you season's greetings and a happy new year. Thank you very much.